The Authority Gap is authored by former Times newspaper assistant editor and columnist Marianne Sieghart. It examines the challenges faced by women who have to work harder to be treated as seriously as men when it comes to competence and leadership, and the perceptions which ultimately affect who gets the top jobs. In 2017, an amendment to the Equality Act made it mandatory for British employers with more than 250 staff to report salary figures for their male and female employees. The outcomes reveal not only a gender pay gap, but an ageism pay gap, with women appearing to pay a maternity penalty over the age of 40, when they are more likely to have had children. And the discrimination is compounded even further by the intersectionality of racism and sexism. On average, black women in the US are paid 37% less than white men and 20% less than white women. And as Seekhart discovers, despite all the legislation, monitoring, and reporting around equality, in the end, authority, expertise, and power is still attributed disproportionately to men. The authority gap is the mother of all gender gaps. If women aren't taken as seriously as men, they're not going to be hired as readily, promoted as fast or paid as much as men, says Seekhart. And the sort of behavior that the authority gap leads to, women being interrupted, talked over, underestimated, ignored and patronized, is bound to dent their confidence and make them feel less entitled to success. Organizational psychologist Adam Grant is the New York Times best-selling author of Think Again and host of the Work Life podcast. He shared that from 63 studies, women who assert their ideas, make direct requests, and advocate for themselves are like less. They're also less likely to get hired, and it hasn't improved over time. And the effects are far-reaching, with long-term negative outcomes for organizations. Michael Hassel is an equality and diversity advisor at the University of Surrey. He believes more needs to be done to challenge the status quo. I am a diversity and inclusion specialist, I deliver unconscious bias training, I am a passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion training. But the way to make sure diversity and inclusion training actually converts to the real world? You can't be too relaxed about it, you need legislation and affirmative action. In Norway, they introduced 50-50 boards, and in recent years, the percentage has shifted in favor of women and been challenged by men, and rightly so. Hassel says forward-thinking and progressive organizations which are truly committed to D&I should have such additional measures in place before they're legally required. So what can companies do? Hassel says training alone can't work. It requires an ongoing long-term commitment. Hassel offers five top tips. Training is important, make it mandatory. Training must be continuous, repeat the messaging time and time again. Develop D&I advocates to speak up in your organization. Set up support networks, women, ethnic diversity, LGBTQ. Be accountable to your customers. Reputation matters. Country Navigator's cultural diversity and inclusion training gives detailed and highly accurate analysis across parameters including explicit and implicit communication and individual and group identity. Our coaches are experts at enabling constructive conversations and sensitive feedback to find solutions to learners' real-world cultural and inclusion challenges. And ongoing access to training and coaching means learners get the chance to apply and practice their newfound skills until it becomes an automatic part of the way they think, work and interact with others. If you'd like support or information about diversity and inclusion training, please contact us. Subscribe for more, and visit CountryNavigator.com for full blogs.